Good morning and welcome to our devotions. It's so good that you've joined in with us and whether this is for the first time or whether you've been staying on track with us for uh, the first week and now into the second week, well, uh, it's just great to have you with us. Um, and this week we're having a look at something a little bit different. Last week we were looking at trust and how we could really uh, learn to trust God in the midst of this circumstance and this situation. But we're moving on a little bit. And I suppose the, the theme for our week and our devotions started yesterday by Pastor Hugh is strength for the journey. And we, we really want to speak into that and pray into that and pray that we get strength for the journey. Yesterday, Pastor Hugh talked about the time he ran the marathon and uh, hitting the wall and how he had to dig deep and um, just how, how to find that strength to keep on going. And we're going to continue on that theme. Uh, certainly, I've never run a marathon. I know that's going to be a big shock to you. The last time I completed a marathon was, uh, well, before they changed the name to Snickers. And uh, you have to be a certain age to get that. Um, but I, I actually have done a couple of things, um, not quite as good as a marathon, but I remember running, I did a half marathon once, um, probably about 10 or 11 years ago now. And uh, two years ago, I completed on the bike, a thing called the Lap of the Lock, and we completed 103 miles on road bikes. Um, and so I suppose what I'm going to try and do is bring a little bit of that experience as well. Uh, by no means an expert, uh, as I'm sure you'll understand, in regards of uh, fitness and athletics and all of that. But like you said yesterday, definitely have the experience of these things and have the experience of doing these things as someone who feels, I suppose, slightly ill-prepared. And maybe you feel ill-prepared to be able to face what we're facing right now. Well, there are things that will get us through. And really what I would love to talk to you about today is that we don't race alone. And please know that we don't race alone. Um, as I said, I've done 13 point whatever miles. Uh, it was the Lisburn Marathon. And uh, one of the things that massively got me through that was, first of all, having a group of us who trained together. We ran together, um, turned up at our house and we kind of ran and then uh, got showered and had a bit of crack together. Um, but also on the day, um, there was one guy in particular, Simon, a good friend of mine. And uh, although he could have gone faster, he could have got a better time. Simon decided that he would stick with me. And the two of us um, ran around that whole track. And whenever it got to points where certainly I felt like giving up, uh, the fact that someone was with me, running alongside me, talking me through it, um, was so helpful to get me to the finish line. Um, I'm just thinking to two years ago as well, that 103 my lap of the lock and it was honestly the worst day that you could have imagined it was the end of of august but you would have thought it was december it had rained all night there was flooding uh it was still raining it was cold it was blowing a gale um i like to refer to myself as a fair weather cyclist never mind a fair weather golfer a fair weather cyclist um but it just so happened on this particular day the weather was horrific um after 15 miles, I was starting to cramp and we still had um, 85 odd yet to do. It was just, it was a horrible, horrible day. But again, I didn't race alone. Um, we started off as a team, but uh, even whenever we got to 80 odd miles, there was a group that kind of wanted to go a bit quicker. And I'll talk a bit more about that um, in a moment. But uh, there was one fella, real good friend of mine as well, a guy called Gary. And Gary... Um, who'd really got me into trying to, he was trying to get me fit and trying to get me into shape and he got me onto the bike and so we did this lap of the lock and he stayed with me the whole way and from about 80 miles where I just felt I had nothing left in the tank and I've never experienced, experienced something quite like it. I've experienced feeling tired and then you stop for a while and you think oh I could have gone a bit longer but to just feel the tank was completely empty um, and to look up and realise that there were both hills and miles still to come. Uh, in fact, we climbed this one uh, hill. We were coming back up into Dungannon to finish the the the, the lap of the Loch Ness, and um, uh, it was it was horrific. I was totally out of breath. I was done in, and I looked at one guy who had actually stopped and got off his bike and was standing at the side, um, and he was 
uh, he was just standing looking at me and I said to him, you know, my goodness, he says, oh, you should see what's to come. So you don't need people like that on your journey. But Gary stuck with me. And in fact, what Gary did was he stayed in front of me. And those of you who cycle know that uh, that's the person that kind of takes a lot of the wind, a lot of the, it's a bit easier if you're the one behind. And um, that got me through. It got me through to the end and there was nothing like getting to that finish line and the embrace of friends, of other people, guys that don't normally probably hug and we're hugging each other and just so delighted that we'd got over the line. Um, there was no social distancing in place by then. Um, but, but it was just incredible to finish the race. And, you know, the point that I'm trying to make is that we have strength for the journey because we don't do this alone. Because we don't do this alone. And I want to read two scriptures to you this morning that um, I suppose remind us, first of all, that we are not alone because God is with us. And then the second one is that because we're not alone because we've other believers with other people who walk and race alongside us. And so we'll talk into both of those. So let me first read Joshua chapter 1. And verse 9, and this is also my baptismal promise, so um, it's, it holds up probably a lovely place in my heart. And it just says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Let me just read that again. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I mean, automatically for me, that brings back memories of a, a childhood song, Be Bold, Be Strong, for the Lord your God is with you. I was nearly going to do the actions there. But it's such a, an encouragement for us to have a boldness, a strength, a, 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 a sense of fortitude about our lives not because we think that we've got this in the bag, not because we think we have, uh, whether it's got the, the mental or the emotional or the spiritual fortitude, but actually because of who journeys with us, because there is one who carries us along. And I, I, I go back to the illustration of the cycling and we have one who goes before us. And the idea of the cyclist going before, it's the one that takes the wind. It's the one that kind of creates that wind tunnel for those who are coming up behind. And, and we have one who has gone before us. I, I don't know what we're going to face today. I don't know what's in your day. I don't know what's in my day today. But here's what I do know is that he goes before us is that he is in this day before we are. And we can be bold, we can be courageous, because we know he's He's where we are going, and he is making a way for you and for me. We don't race alone, we don't journey alone. We go through this with him and with his help. So be strong and courageous. I love what it says in the, the Living Bible. This is the translation. It says, yes, be bold and strong. Banish fear. Banish fear and doubt, for remember, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And maybe we could just, and we will, we'll spend a bit of time in a moment just recognising and remembering that, that God is with us. Uh, think of the Holy Spirit, who's called the paraclete. It's a, uh, this idea of para, that, that he comes alongside us and he walks along and journeys alongside us. So remember God is with you today. But also in regards of others. And we're not called to race alone. And we have strength for the journey because we, we don't have to do this as an island. And we're so blessed in this day and age. I know like this is, this is just strange times. Uh, probably nearly every night I go to bed I say to Alison, can you believe what's actually going on right now? Um, and, and, and we can't, you know, but here's the, here's the, the glorious thing that we have the technology that we're able to connect with one another and we're able to not have to race our journey alone. And I just love what it says in Hebrews 10 verse 24. And it says, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us consider how we can spur one another on. And uh, I, I suppose my, my head was just going on some of this and just thinking, how can we encourage one another today? How can we, and yes, we're going through stuff, but so someone else. And I just wondered, how, 
what would it look like for us to spur one another on? You are not alone. And you know, sometimes it, it's up to us to make that connection. In, in the races that I ran, in both races, the half marathon and the cycle race, we started with a bigger team than we ended with. Uh, we started with a bigger group. In, in the half marathon, there was one who wanted to just go on and get the best time. And that was brilliant for him. And, and there's no harm and no foul in that. But in this race that we are living right now, there's no time and there's no place for people wanting to run their own their own thing. In the in the cycle race as well, there were those who were much fitter than I, and they kind of wanted to get a better time. They wanted to catch the group that was in front of them, and and they went on ahead and did that. However, one of the things that we had instituted whenever we were out cycling with a group before in training was that we wouldn't leave anyone behind. You see, in cycle clubs, um, there there can be two different ways. You can do that that you go to the speed of the slowest and you just you keep them coming and you don't drop them off the back or else you have clubs that do a drop policy and if you can't keep up well, then you're just, somebody else will pick you up on the way through. Church doesn't have, a, and Christianity doesn't have a drop policy. We need to be there for one another. And I just wonder uh, this week, as we come to, to a close and we're gonna pray, how can we spur one another on? And a few wee things. I, can I encourage you today? Give somebody a call. Lift the phone, FaceTime, uh, call, Skype, Zoom, whatever technology you're using. Give somebody a call. Send a text. Send a WhatsApp. Encourage somebody today. Tell somebody you're praying for them. Tell somebody they're not alone. Tell somebody you're grateful for them being in your life. Encourage them today. Put something positive on social media. If you're on social media, why not put something positive, life-giving, life-affirming, something that just will encourage people. And and here's the last one. Before we come to pray, I think one of the best things we can do is pray with one another. And so find somebody today to pray with. Find somebody that you can just, and maybe for a lot of us, that's going to be somebody in our own home. Or you might want to lift the phone and say, can I just pray with you? Um, Find somebody to pray with today. And let's spur one another on. You're not meant to race alone. So, As we have challenged ourselves with that and we are encouraged, I hope, by that, we're going to come to pray. And we're going to pray um, and we're going to ask God to come and to move and to have his way. And so what I would love us to do is um, to use the acrostic that we did last week and that's start. And we're going to move through that. We're going to move through it quickly. Again, if you want to take more time, you can pause and move forward. Um, But we're going to start with sonship, recognising that we are children of God today and just revel in that, revel in the fact that we're forgiven and cleansed and that we're loved by him. So let's let's just recognize that and that we are not alone. Thank you, Lord. So we thank you today, Lord, that you have called us to be your children. We are sons and daughters of the living God and that you have brought us into your household. You have brought us so that we are not strangers and the aliens, but you have brought us so that we are known by you. We thank you that we're known by you today. And we thank you that we can be bold, that we can be strong, that we can be courageous because you're with us. That you never leave us and you never forsake us. Thank you that we're the children of God today. In Jesus' name. And so we come, and we come to be thankful. We come to worship. We come to say, Lord, hallowed be your name. And uh, yeah, let's worship the Lord today. Let's fix our eyes on him. Let's spend a moment declaring who he is. And also, just again, I just find it really helpful at times to list the things that we're grateful for and thankful for. So let's come with an attitude of gratitude and of worship today.
So today, Lord, we say hallowed be your name. We worship you, we adore you, we thank you, Lord. We magnify you, we declare you as holy, as mighty, as awesome, as one who is above all things. We worship you, Lord God, and we thank you today for all of the things that you've given us and placed within our lives. Lord, for your provision, Lord, for the food that we eat, for the, the, the connections of relationship that we have with others. Lord, we thank you for the country we live in. We thank you for our government, for our NHS staff, Father, for those who are going out to work that today, Father, and um, Lord, being uh, putting themselves at risk, Father, but doing it, Lord, because they have a heart and a half to do it, Father, and I just thank you for them today. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for all your goodness today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so we come to ask, and we come, and again, you might want to take more time in this section and pause and just really uh, enter into praying for certain things right now, but let's ask. Let's ask God to move. Let's ask God to touch this nation. And There may be individuals that you know that need a touch of God, and there may be people who are suffering from the illness. There may be some people whose family are, and... Uh, and also, let's keep praying for our NHS staff. Let's keep praying for those who are out working in shops, essential services. Um, and let's pray right across the board, even for those who may be feeling um, lonely, who are feeling a little bit alone. And we've been praying into this that we don't race alone. So let's pray into that. Um, and even ask God to drop people into our hearts that we need to contact today and that we need to help. So, come on, let's ask. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we remind ourselves today that you are a way maker, miracle worker, light in the darkness, promise keeper. It's who you are, Lord. And so, Lord, we pray, would you shine in the darkest places today? In wards, Father, where people are struggling for breath. In wards where doctors and nurses and uh, hospital staff are fretting and overworked and under-energized, under Father. I just pray, Lord God, would you fill them would you touch them, Father? Would you be light in the darkest of places, Father? We pray for miracles to break out, Father. We pray for the miraculous in individuals' lives and we pray for the miraculous over our nation and over the world, Father. Push back this illness, push back this disease. And Father, move, we pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And then we come just to a moment of interspread, just looking in, inside and just saying, Lord, a moment of repentance. And we just say, Father, search me, O oh God, and know if there's any wicked way within me, any way that I need to repent of. And why don't you just do that even as I pray and bring us just to a close. So, Father, Lord, we do pray that you would help us. Father, I think your word that says, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. And, Father, help us to walk with you with clean hearts and pure hands hearts that are seeking you and running hard after you in jesus name and so we finish with truth for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen lord we declare that you are king of kings that you are lord of lords that you go before us that you walk with us that you do not leave us alone but you hold us Father, right throughout the journey. And I pray for strength today for every individual watching this. May strength infuse into their inner being. May you strengthen them, Father God, that they might run with you, that they might run this race, Father God. And Lord, we get to the end, to the, to the goal for which you have put in front of us. So Lord, we declare you to be King of Kings, Lord of Lords. 
and we worship and adore you. Be with us this day, we pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you in whatever you're doing today. Please remember to give us a call if you need us, if you need somebody to pray with you. But let's also be sending out those calls, those texts, those encouragements, and letting people know that they're not in this alone. God bless you.